Continuing with the practice of mindfulness of breathing, I've covered the first four steps of the 16. And rather than continuing today with that into the fifth step, I think it's good to uh, emphasize uh, the importance of caring for one's attitude in meditation. And one of the inspirations for that today is uh, to have an attitude of patience, to not succumb to any attitude of impatience, wanting more, eager to get, uh, go further, wanting to somehow f- always feel like we're improving and getting more, learning more, learning something new. There's something uh, quite... Um, um, there's something quite... Um, simple about mindfulness of breathing and maybe even something humble that uh, there's a kind of lack of greed or wanting more or expectation of more a willingness instead there's a willingness to just be ordinary and simple and be kind of in the, you know, on the ground floor and to be somehow um, a a modest servant of the Dharma, modest servant of the practice. We kind of give ourselves over to the practice the best we can. But uh, trust the Dharma, trust this process. Just be willing to kind of offer the sincere way our best we can and then trust that what will unfold will unfold accordingly. And uh, we don't have to be ahead of ourselves or looking ahead or planning ahead. Or And so mindfulness of breathing, one of the first lessons for many people is patience. Lots of patience. And... Um, the um, and if it's also a little bit of a trick, I suppose, maybe to say this. It's true. It's completely true. What I'm saying, and it turns out that uh, the fastest way to develop in meditation is to not be in a hurry. The fastest way to cultivate the receptivity, the openness, the calm, the subtleness that really allows the practice to unfold and deepen is not to be too concerned about unfolding and deepening. Uh, To be more concerned about just being content to sit patiently, openly with what we actually have in the moment. To have a continuity with breathing as if it is... um, um, as if uh, we're in it for the long term, as if, you know, this is, um, you know, our job is just to keep showing up and doing the best we can and and let the progress take care of itself. So what I'm talking about here is an attitude. And a huge part of meditation is uh, coming to terms, understanding and adjusting the attitude with which we meditate. And one of the advantages of meditation is that um, there's something about sitting quietly in meditation, doing something as simple as being with the breathing, that uh, we start seeing attitudes we have that are invisible in daily life. Or we don't really notice that well. Some of them because they're so subtle, some of them because they're so habituated, they've kind of become invisible to us. And... Um, and certainly we don't see the subtlety of how it works. And so when we sit and meditate, uh, we have this heightened sensitivity and even the smallest movements to attitudes that take us away or interfere with the deepening, the settling, and just being there in a simple, relaxed, patient way start standing out in highlight. Now, if a person has a tendency to be self-critical, When we sit in meditation, we can easily get much more material uh, 
uh, to use to criticize ourselves. Um, if the mind wanders off a little bit too often, then I'm, you know, I'm a wandering off kind of person, and that's not so good. Or if um, I am, uh, you know, aversive to what's happening, or if I'm too greedy and want something better, and I see that, then you know, like, oh, I must. This is not a good Buddhist thing to be aversive and greedy, and now I'm embarrassment to the Buddhist cause, and and so we're kind of berating ourselves, and start seeing these movements, these attitudes, these beliefs that uh, come into play, and to recognize them as such. Oh, there's an attitude, there's an interpretation, there's a judgment, and um, it's kind of the attitude has more like the way in which we hold our experience. The way, the, the disposition that we have, the, um, the way we feel, think, and respond, uh, the manner, it's kind of like the manner by which we respond, the atmosphere with which we respond to things, and the way we think and feel. So, um, and so we start seeing these attitudes, and um, one attitude that I had when I, early years of meditation, was... Um, I was sitting in meditation halls with other people and I would compare myself to them. I had no idea what was going on in their meditation. But still, I had this attitude, the grass is greener elsewhere. That the, the, over there and that person, now that well, really was supposed to be good meditation and why am I not there? And it was a silly attitude to have because I had no idea what was going on in them. It was just an attitude or kind of a kind of a kind of a belief that I carried with me and it was more than a belief because it came with a whole kind of uh, atmosphere of, um, of feeling sorry for myself or feeling discouraged or feeling somehow left out of what was the really the important thing what other what everyone else was experiencing all these other attitudes were kind of beliefs were coming in and um, and I'd get caught up in them and one of the things I was really delightful was to appreciate that I didn't have to solve these things. I didn't have to berate myself or be too involved in fixing them. Uh, I could just trust my breathing. Just come back and stay with breathing. Just stay and stay. And, um, and when, I, when I did that, the energy of attention was then went to feed mindfulness of breathing rather than feeding these attitudes. And all too often, we reinforce unhealthy attitudes. Rumination, preoccupation, believing them, uh, having them be the, the catalyst, or the fuel for how we think about things. But just come back to breathing. Trust the breathing. Be really simple. And I had these images, you know, for me, it's just, you know, that there's, uh, you're on your scooter and you're pushing through and, and maybe there's a place where uh, there's cobblestones, so it's a little bit rough to ride on it, and it's not so comfortable. But you still, you know, just keep pushing and pushing, and soon enough you come out of the cobblestones, and then there maybe the road is, is smooth again. And um, so, um, so attitudes. And uh, I wanted to offer you um, a few attitudes or a few orientations that uh, you might think are helpful for meditation. And um, so here's one. It's kind of a policy, attitude, understanding that you can uh, kind of keep close by. It's enough to clearly recognize what is happening. It is not enough just to recognize what's happening in the present. Nothing needs to be fixed or changed. Just recognize. Patience with all that happens. It's good to have patience with whatever is happening. Being in a hurry is a form of greed. There is nothing to prove or resist in meditation. Every occurrence is a time to learn something new about being peaceful. So whatever is happening, you don't have to resist it. You don't have to uh, 
prove anything in relationship to it. You don't have to defend yourself or explain yourself or justify yourself, berate yourself. It's just something new. It's just something that you can learn something new about how to be peaceful, how not to be caught, how to be not non-agitated about this. Another attitude is that you are a valuable person. Your well-being is important. And your capacity for attention is a treasure. No message that are you, no message that you are less than beautiful is worth believing. No message that you are less than beautiful is worth believing. And finally, trust the awareness that flows out of stillness. Trust the awareness that flows out of calm or tranquility, out of stillness. So these five, these attitudes that I just kind of recited have in common that they promote a calm, non-reactive attention, including a calm, non-reactive attention to our reactivity. So this is kind of the, the sleight of hand or the paradox or the, some people, it's the, the light and their, their, their amusement, is that of course we're gonna have reactivity, of course we're not gonna be calm but can we be calm and non-reactive to that? And, and one way to do that is not to be too concerned about fixing things or trying to solve the, anything going on, but just come back and trust mindfulness of breathing. Breathe with, just be with your breathe, the constancy, pushing the scooter of mindfulness, riding the wave of mindfulness, wave after wave, waves of breathing. And if something is particularly strong and therefore compelling for your mind to pay attention to, like some strong physical sensations, maybe pain, maybe strong emotions, <clears throat> maybe there's a strong bout of thinking goes on. One way to uh, have a some certain degree of tranquility with that is, and, and to stay with your breathing. So there's continuity, a constancy. Uh, the it's like uh, uh, breathing becomes the background beat or the, you know, the rhythm of your music that just kind of keeps it going. The rhythm of your poem. <clears throat> the um, the um, one way to do that is to breathe with what's compelling, breathe through it. So you're, sometimes you really need to acknowledge what's happening, the full acknowledgement, mindfulness of what's compelling and challenging is really important. You can't just ignore it and push it aside. But you can, it's possible to stay with the breathing and then, and then um, breathe through and breathe with. One way to see this is to think of mindfulness of breathing uh, as the center of your focus of attention. And anything else that needs some attending is you allow it to be in the peripheral vision of attention, in the peripheral attention. So it doesn't have to get, uh, at, you know, it doesn't have to capture your attention. It just has to be known that it's there and you just keep going. Just like you would on a scooter going through town. There's all kinds of things maybe you have to keep attentive to, the traffic, people and all stuff, but they're a little bit more in the peripheral vision and the central vision is just keeping your eye on where you're going with that scooter. So where you're going with a scooter of mindfulness of breathing is uh, on a long or short journey, on a journey that takes you to the next breath. That's all, one breath after the other. So enjoy your mindfulness of the breathing and now uh, we'll continue uh, on this uh, wonderful path of, of um, that this breathing practice can take us. Thank you.